Hi guys, Tom from Photorix here. In this video, we're going to have an in-depth look at the VicoVation Vico Marcus 3 dash camera. I'm going to take you through all the settings, all the screens, and then I'll show you a load of video clips. And at the end, I'll give you my final thoughts on this. So stay tuned, watch the whole video. If you want to skip to the clips, they're about 10 minutes in. But if you want to see how to set the camera up and all the menu screens, then keep on watching. So let's have a look at starting up the VicoVation Marcus 3 for the first time. You need a micro SD card, uh, it has to be class 10 or above. Um, so if you use a, a lower class card, it just won't record properly or it might not even record at all. Um, they recommend at least 16 gigabytes as well. Uh, I'm using a 32 gigabyte card here. So on the side of the camera, you've got the card slot and it's got a little diagram there to show you how to put the card in. So we'll just put the card in like so until it clicks into place. I've got the GPS mouse already attached and now I'm going to plug in the power supply into the USB socket there. So we'll plug that in. Just wait for a second. The green light will come on on the top. And the camera is now on and it's now recording. I don't know how well you can see the screen on the camera but it's obviously uh, a live view footage um, on the screen there. We've got a uh, number of buttons on the bottom here. Um, they're multi-purpose buttons depending on what the camera is actually doing um, at the time. Uh, this one is the, uh, the power button. We've got a down arrow and up arrow uh, an OK button and uh, this yellow one is uh, the return button for in the menu but it's also the emergency record button. You can press that and it will save the clip as an emergency clip and not overwrite it. Also on the bottom of the screen uh, you can probably just about see there's some icons there as well which match um, these icons. Okay so let's get into the menu first of all and have a look at some of the menu options so press the menu button and you've got a really nice uh, graphical display uh, on this camera it kind of looks like it should be touch screen but it's not uh, you have to use the buttons obviously you've got the arrows to scroll through the different settings and uh, once you get to the end it comes back to the beginning so take a closer look at some of the menu functions. So the first uh, menu option we have there is video. So if we click the OK button, and uh, that brings you into the resolution. Click OK again, and, uh, and we can use the up and down arrows to scroll through all the different resolutions. And we've got 720 at 30 frames a second, 720 at 60, 1080 at 30, 1080 at 60, and then the Extreme HD 1296 at 30. I'm actually going to put it on there for now. Below that we've got EV value. Now this is the exposure value. Uh, this will be very important when you are using a polarizing filter because a polarizing filter actually blocks out a certain amount of light. Um, in photography terms we usually say about one to two stops of light, which means that you have to adjust this EV value um, to plus one stop maybe you might get away with 0.5 you have to experiment with that one when, when you've got the uh, the polarizing filter on I'm gonna put it on 0.5 for now and I shall have a look at the video footage uh, later on if I need to change that then I can do so to get out of the menu press the yellow back button and then we can Oops, wrong way. Go to um, the other menu options. This one says G plus. So let's have a look at that. This is for the G sensor, and you can have that on high, low, or medium. I'm going to put it on medium for now because my car picks up a lot of uh, bumps. And again, go back. The next one is display. So we've got LCD auto off. Um, so you can have that so the LCD screen turns off automatically. Oops, keep pressing the wrong button. LCD brightness, low or standard. Date stamp, 
Uh, I'll have that on on the uh, the bottom of the footage. I have a date stamp. Vico tag. This is the same as the uh, the other Vico model I had. You can actually um, put a little tag on the bottom of your videos. You could have like your your number plate or your name or uh, anything you want on there. So kind of uh, that footage is then definitely yours sort of thing. Uh, image inverse and image mirror. So if you've got the camera mounted upside down or if you want to flip the, the video feed, you can do that as well. Audio, record audio, obviously um, you can have that on or off and then volume control off, low, medium or high. That's for the key beep volume, which you can probably just about here in the background there. And then the next one is playback. That just lets you view the uh, clips that you've already recorded. That's a really good thing about having a screen on the back of the camera. You can just go straight into that and watch any clips back that you need to. Or if you do have an accident, God forbid, um, and you need to show evidence to the police or to any authorities there and then, you can do that. You can just show them the footage straight away. You don't need to download it to a phone or anything like that. And then the next one we have is system. Uh, you've got the clock, you've got the language, the version, and you can format the card, and then you can go back to the default settings uh, there as well. When the camera is in its kind of normal recording mode, um, you can use these buttons to do various different things as well. Uh, the one with the microphone in there, that turns the audio recording on and off, and you'll see the icon goes green uh, when it's on. Uh, this one takes you into the menu as normal. This one here, the record button, you can actually stop the recording um, by pressing that and you'll see the little record icon down there goes grey when you stop that and also uh, up here you've got a record light. So when you press that they both go red. Um, so you can actually uh, pause the recording um, for whatever reason if you're just not needing the camera. Uh, on the top here we've got the amount of space left for emergency clips. Um, you can only hold so many clips, uh, emergency clips on the camera. And we've got the, the G sensor is on, you've got the frame rate and the quality, and of course you've got the time up there. And you've got the red light on the top signifying that the camera is recording. You see on the front of the camera there are no lights at all. Um, it's all on the back, so you don't have to worry about um, the security issue of having lights on the front of the camera. Just a quick note as well, um, I'm actually inside at the moment, as you can probably tell. Um, I do have the GPS dongle connected, but obviously inside it's not picking up any signal. If I was outside in the car and I wanted to change the functions of the GPS, I would come into this G function um, icon and there would be more options on this menu. I will show you that uh, when I've got the camera mounted in the car. So I've got the GPS set up now and the first thing you can see on the main screen is the blue arrow and this will come up when you've got GPS signal. You can now go into the menu and back into the G plus functions and you have all these different menu options available to you now. You've got the G sensor setup which was there before, GPS setting which shows you all the satellites that you've got. You can see I've got quite a few there. You've got speed position overlay, smart warning system, which has its own sub menu if you go into. You've got the lane departure warning system settings. You've got off, and then you've got a selection of speeds. You'll notice it's only in kilometers an hour. You can't change that at the moment. Uh, you've got the forward collision warning system. Again, you can enter that and select different speeds. Again, all in kilometers an hour. You've got the overspeed notice and you can turn that on and again to different speeds up to 130 kilometers an hour. And below that you've got the overspeed camera warning on or off. And then it takes you back to the lane departure warnings. I'll talk more about those systems a bit later on in the video. Right, so let's have a look at some footage from the Marcus 3. Uh, this is set at the Extreme HD and as you can see it's kind of uh, afternoon daytime. Ignore the time on the clock 
uh, I hadn't set it at this point. Uh, the camera is mounted on the suction mount at the bottom of my windscreen. And you can see a bit, a bit of the uh, suction mount in the bottom of the screen there. The uh, video quality looks really very good actually. Uh, at full size on my 15 inch monitor it's a little bit blocky but in smaller sizes uh, it's very clear. You can easily read all the number plates and the exposure overall is actually very good as well. The image circle, the, like the viewing angle, is uh, quite wide. Uh, you can see a bit of the kind of fishy effect on the top corners where the buildings start to curve in. But it's not too excessive and the actual kind of centre of the footage is very well controlled. And it's uh, quite realistic, it's quite a realistic view. Some of the other cameras you see often kind of distort the image quite considerably, but this one doesn't seem to do that. The footage is very smooth, there's no jerkiness or juddering. Doesn't appear to be any weird artifacts going on. Uh, I didn't notice any flickering or anything like that. So overall, it's actually really very good footage. This in daytime. This clip is filmed a little bit later on uh, from the previous one. Again, this is extreme HD. I just wanted to show you the exposure on this clip. If you look in the clouds on the top of the frame, you can see that they're quite blown out. The whites are all blown out. But that's actually okay, I don't mind that in this clip because the main area, centre area of the frame is really well exposed. And on a car camera that's really the bit that you want well exposed because that's obviously where the action is going to happen. Uh, you'll see in a minute as we come around the corner and the light direction changes slightly, uh, the exposure will change but you won't really notice it because the camera does a really good job of controlling the exposure and it seems that it's always exactly where you want it to be. So you see as we come around the corner away from the light source and now the sky looks really good and really well exposed but the car in front also looks really well exposed and the camera's controlled that really well. This clip again it's still extreme HD but this is extremely low light. This was filmed about 11.30 at night and uh, this is a pub I went to down a tiny little country road with no street lighting whatsoever so this is literally just my headlights. As you can see, uh, the top of the frame is very dark obviously because there's no lights there. But the area that my headlights are covering is pretty good actually. I don't think I could see as much as I could in real life as I can on this video clip. I think the camera is doing a really good job of bringing up that exposure. There's very little noise in this image, uh, which I would expect with so much sensor gain, but it's really well controlled. Uh, so I'm really impressed. Uh, the last VcoVation I reviewed had really good nighttime footage and it seems that this one is just as good if not slightly better. This clip's a little bit further on down the road as you can see we've hit some street lights now and uh, again the exposure overall is really very good. The only issue I have with this is the reflections off the windscreen. This is partly due to the uh, distance that the camera is away from the windscreen and also uh, probably just slightly because of the angle that the windscreen is. I'm hoping that once I fit the uh, polarizing filter it will help cut out a little bit of that glare um, although at night time it probably won't do such a good job. But as you can see driving down this dual carriageway that's well lit then we suddenly go into darkness again. Uh, it's really well controlled, the exposure keeps up and I can see plenty ahead of me and uh, any second we should come back again into some light and the camera keeps up really well with that as well. This is the last clip in the Extreme HD. Again, you can see we're in a well lit area. Really good image quality. You can see a bit of reflection in the screen. But now I'm gonna leave the street lights and you can still see just as much in front as you could before, uh, just in the headlights. Again, the reflections are slightly annoying here, but uh, not really much of an issue. There was a bit of rain around this time I filmed this as well, so there's a bit of water on the windscreen, uh, which probably isn't helping with the reflections. And again, just back into uh, the area I drove down before from the first clip. I'll just leave this running just so you can sort of compare the first clip in the daytime to this one at uh, sort of, we're talking almost uh, 12 o'clock at night, I think this was filmed. Let's have a look at some of the other quality settings now. This one is uh, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. 
Again, the quality is really good. There's no change in the perspective or change in the image size. It's the same as it was on the Extreme HD clips. Uh, you can probably see there's a bit of a weird kind of wobbling going on. Even though I'm stationary, it's the pictures all over the place. I don't know if that's the camera or if that's just my car. I really can't tell. It doesn't do it all the time. It only seems to do it on certain clips, but I have noticed that happening on other cameras. So maybe it's just a, a feature of the type of sensor that's in the camera. Once you're moving there, as you can see, it's perfectly fine. Uh, it's, there's no juddering or anything. And uh, even at just 1080, it's really good image quality. This clip is at 720 at 60 frames a second. Again, you can see that the picture size and the perspective hasn't changed at all. It's the same as the other clips. Uh, the quality is perfectly fine. Again, I can't really see much difference, to be honest, between this one and the 1080. Uh, at full screen, it is slightly more blocky, but on smaller sizes, it's pretty damn good. Again, the exposure is really good. And at 60 frames a second, you could slow this footage down quite a bit. So if you needed to see exactly what happened in an accident, you can easily do that with this footage. Lastly, this clip is 720 at 30 frames a second. A uh, slightly slower frame rate, um, so it's not quite as smooth. But to be honest, there's very little in it. I can't really tell much difference at all, to be honest. Let's have a look at the polarizing filter holder for this camera now. Um, as I showed you earlier on, you've got the extra um, polarizer holder that clips onto the main body of the camera. Once that's fitted, you then need a 52 millimeter polarizing filter, uh, which I have here. I bought a Hoya Pro 1. I actually use these for my normal photography and as it so happens I've just bought a camera system that has 52mm filter thread lenses so I'd actually already bought this even before this turned up which was handy. Um, you don't have to go for Hoya Pro 1, uh, there are cheaper options available but I like to buy the best that I can. So simply you get your polarizer and it's got a thread on the end of it and you screw that carefully without threading it into the holder. Screw that all the way in until it's tight. Now you'll notice with the polarizer there's two sections of it. There's the thin little bottom section and there's a thicker top section. And that thicker section actually spins by itself independently of this bottom section. So when you tighten it up just make sure you tighten the bottom section up and then that allows the top to spin. Now what polarizer does is it cuts out reflections on non uh, on uh, metallic surfaces and on water. So if you're shooting something with a camera and you want to see through water, you can use a polarizer. If you want to see through glass, or if you want to take the glare off uh, metallics, then you can use a polarizer. Now I've tested this out on this camera, and I'll show you some clips in a second, and I'll explain on those clips why this is a brilliant idea but it just doesn't really work very well. One thing that I do want to mention before I show you the clips is on the holder it's got a separate ball head for the mount. So that means that the existing setup that you've got you have to take that out and then replace it with this. I initially had the camera installed upside down in my car um, with the suction mount but when I put this on I couldn't because I couldn't get the right angle because this doesn't move that's stuck there so you might have to jiggle things about if you use this and uh, sort of put your sticky pad or your suction mount somewhere else to in order you to get the right angle on the windscreen so let's have a look at some clips with the polarizer filter and I'll talk you through it so in this clip I'm actually turning the polarizer as I'm sat still and you can probably see just in the bottom right glare on the dashboard and you can see it just goes there. That's basically what a polarizer does, it just cuts out reflections. Again I'm just sat spinning the polarizer and if you look carefully uh, you can see the sky goes a little bit bluer as I'm spinning it. Now my issue with this is that the way the polarizer works is that you have to be a certain angle to the light for it to work. So as you're driving about obviously the angle's changing from the light source and you're not going to get the polarizing effect. So it's only going to work when you're driving in a certain direction. And that kind of negates the purpose of a polarizer. So in theory, it's a great idea, but in practice, it's just not going to work very well. Let's have a quick look at some of the other features on this camera then. This is going to be the overspeed warning. 
you'll see it pop up in a minute and you can get to that through the G menu. So when you go over a set speed, you hear a bong and then the overspeed warning will pop up and then it will go away again once you've uh, gone past the speed. This one is going to show the front collision warning system. You can see it comes up with that big uh, picture there. Now this wasn't set up 100% correctly because I didn't uh, calibrate the camera. So it is flagging up quite a few false warnings here. However, when I did have the camera set up properly, uh, it worked very well actually. But again, it might be a bit of a gimmick because you should be able to see a car in front of you anyway. So you shouldn't need to rely on the camera to tell you that there's a car there. So in summary, the Marcus 3 by VicoVision it's quite a good little camera, I quite enjoyed using it and quite enjoyed trying out all the different features. Some of it is a bit gimmicky, I think that the polarising filter attachment, it sounds like a really good idea but it, it just can't work just because of the way that polarisers work. Um, also the lane departure warning system, I couldn't get that to work. Um, it works in the other VCovation camera that I've tried, um, but for some reason in this one I just could not get it to work. The front collision warning system, again it works well, but it's a little bit gimmicky I think. You should be able to see in front of you, you should be able to see if there's a car there. Um, I don't think you need the camera to tell you that. The overspeed, I can see why you might want that. Um, you can't always stare at your speedometer, so that is kind of useful. Although this is only in kilometres an hour, and obviously in the UK we're in miles an hour, so again it was a little bit uh, useless for me, but I can see why it's a good idea. The image quality out of the Marcus 3 is really very good all around. The Extreme HD, there's not a great deal of difference between 1080 but you can see that it is slightly sharper. Both the 1080 and the 720 footage is really good, there's no change in the angle of view and both are really good quality. The camera handles the exposures really well, it goes from light to dark really well and it copes with all sorts of lighting conditions, front lit, back lit, it handles it all. The low light performance of this is really good. It's probably slightly better than the last VicoVation model I tried and it's definitely one of the best I've tried out of all the cameras that I've tested. If you want something that works really well in low light, it's got a really cool little screen on the back so you can see what you're doing and has really good image quality, then the Marcus 3 could be the camera for you. There is a Vico Viewer app uh, for the PC which you can use to download the footage on. You can then use that to view the footage obviously, sort through it and also view the GPS data. Unfortunately I don't have a PC at the moment and it's only available on PC so I can't show you how that works. If you want more information on the Marcus 3 or any other dash cameras go visit bbutton.com. All the links are in the description box below. Hope this was helpful guys and I'll see you all soon.